Welcome to Michigan Reimagined, presented by T.A. Forsberg and Wagoner Financial. And here's your host, Chris Buck. So food delivery has been a thing for a long time, and national brands like Grubhub and DoorDash and Uber Eats flourished during the pandemic. But today we've got a guest that has a unique spin on delivery in Greater Lansing, the founder of Red Bike Delivery, Mr. Jeremy Hurt. Welcome back to the show, Jeremy. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, right on. So I know it's been a couple of years, I think, since we've had you on in this capacity. So uh, if you can help us remember how and why did you decide to embark on this journey? Um, so I, it was about four years ago that I started, um, and I, it was during the pandemic and I just noticed, um, how these, these other app companies were taking advantage of the situation in the restaurants and stuff like that. And I wanted to do something to help out the local businesses. Okay. Got it. And now, um, the, the, delivery by bicycle, right? So Mm -hmm. I know people who've probably ordered food and had it delivered to their houses or, you know, dealing with people that are behind the wheel of a vehicle. What made bicycle delivery something that was important to you? Uh, In my research for starting the business, I was looking into into the amount of deliveries that the companies, the app companies like DoorDash and and, and whatnot do. And, um, you know, DoorDash that controls like 50% of the, 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 the market and they were doing over 700,000 deliveries a day. So you think about the carbon that's going out from all those deliveries. I just didn't see how it was sustainable. Got it. Okay. And then, um, you know, we think about those other brands that we've mentioned a couple of times now, and I don't want to plug them too hard. Yeah. But, uh, but that uh, exclusively food delivery is my, you know, as a layperson in in the world, I think of them as delivering food. You don't only deliver food, though, is that right? Right. Um, I've been uh, I delivered quite a few different things from an air filter for a furnace, or uh, uh, there was a note to a dog sitter. <laughs> it was that, that was the most bizarre one. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's I consider it more of an errand running service than a delivery service, just a straight delivery service. Got it. So people will um, contact you. Tell them whatever your need is, and you hop on your bike and you go make that happen. Yeah, as long as I know where they are and <laughs> where I got to go to pick the stuff up, that's that's about it. Got it. Okay, so for our listeners in Detroit or Grand Rapids or Saginaw mm-hmm. or New York City or whatever, uh, they're probably not going to call you and ask you for the services. Yeah. Uh, but so, what is your radius? How far are you able to go? Um. So I can go pretty far, but I suggest that um, that people order from like a three mile radius from their home. If it's, if it's from a restaurant, especially cause that way I can make sure that it's as fresh as it can be. You know, I can, I can get to them in a, in a decent amount of time. Uh, now I have gone like eight to 10 miles on a delivery. So I was in bath once. So got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that was quite a haul. <clears throat> so how does the scheduling work? How far ahead to pee? Cause you're a one man show. Yes. Is that right? You yeah, don't yeah. have a fleet of people out there on bikes. This is just Jeremy Hurt out on his uh, on his single bike doing the good for the community, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how do you manage the logistics of that? Do people need to call ahead, and do you kind of work your whole day a day in advance, or is it all kind of spur of the moment, first come, first serve? Um, so it, it kind of is first come, first serve. Um, I, I suggest that people call before they order just to make sure that I'm available. Um, or I do have a... Um, uh, set up on Calendly, where people can make actual appointments, and that'll block off the times and stuff like that, so they'll be able to see when I'm actually available. Got it. Okay. So on an average day, how many runs do you make, if you call it that? Oh, on an average day, probably about between, probably around 10 or so. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And do you have hours of operation, or are you? Uh, is it mostly night stuff, or is it during the day for lunches, or how does that work? It's uh, um, lunches is, is a big part, um, and then and then like later at night, I get a usually get a, a push. Um, so it's yeah, lunch and then like way late at night. Right. <laughs> so Got it. yeah, uh, so my hours eleven are to two and ten to three. Pretty flexible, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. And again, so. Um, what gap are you filling exactly? So, you know, we talk about these other services that are out there. Mm-hmm. You know, what inspires you to, to do this? Is this a, a real money-making endeavor or is it about the carbon emissions and just making a statement on clean energy or is it you know, your personal 
uh, you know, what, uh, what drives you to do this every day? Because it's certainly not on the beaten path to, right. to make this decision as a career path. <clears throat> no, it, it definitely wasn't. Considering I knew nothing about bikes, running a business, or <laughs> you know, any of that when I started. Um, but I, I think a lot of it is I've I've really enjoyed not having to punch a clock for somebody else. Um, and it's you know, like when I get orders, I'm just going out and doing my thing, you know, I mean, it, it feels more liberating to me to be able to do something like this. And I, I'm able to give back to like a community that has given me so much too. So that's always a, a plus for me. Got it. Okay. And so generally speaking, and uh, to get back to a question I asked you before, you're Lansing based. I don't mm -hmm. think I set that tone here uh, for, for those who are listening. So you're Lansing based. And generally speaking, are is most of your stuff in and around the city of Lansing? I mean, maybe East Lansing or out to Delta Township at all, or is it mostly city of? It's uh, uh, East Lansing is a big part of it now. Okay. Um, so it, that's, you know, especially when the students are back, obviously, that keeps me super busy. So, right. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's mainly Lansing. Um, anywhere but anywhere from the south side to the north side so yep yeah you never know where i'm gonna be <laughs> right 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 okay and so uh i gotta ask how do you manage inclement weather how do you manage michigan winters snow and ice that kind of stuff um I, i've gotten really good at uh knowing what kind of layers i need and okay. uh um, finding the right uh combinations of of things like i have these mitts that go over my handlebars and i have heated heated wraps that go on the handlebars too so they're like heated inside yeah <laughs> the right. mitts and those uh uh, uh, um, w hand warmer things that you shake up. Yep. They have those that stick on the bottom of your foot too. So those have been like super helpful. Uh, and I can stay out for five, six hours in, in, in some cold weather. So okay. I got it, I got it down pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and so how do, uh, how do you manage, uh, bookings? Like what, what is the, uh, the platform that you use to stay organized or for listeners to say, huh, this is cool. I'll throw this guy some business. I'm going to order lunch and, and uh, get, how do they get in touch with red bike delivery? Um, Facebook would be the best way. Um, uh, it's just red bike delivery. Um, you can just type it in and it'll come in. It also comes up on Google maps. Um, that you, you can search, you can just Google red bike delivery and, and, I know, at least for me, it comes up pretty, you know, pretty high on the list. Uh, I don't know if that's because I own the business. Right, or not. right. <laughs> like, uh, uh, so, so that, that'll have all my contact information, uh, everything like that, uh, that you would need to get a hold of me. Got it. Okay. So, um, all right. So the, the process then is if I, uh, if I'm stuck in an office somewhere in downtown, uh, Lansing and I want to order a sub from a place down the street. I call and confirm that you're available to make the scoop yeah. and then I will then call and order my food and tell them that you're the one coming or how, what, like, how does that mechanically work? Yeah. You just, basically you're just calling and, and ordering a, an order for pickup and then I'm just going and picking it up instead of the person making right. the, the, the order. Yeah. And how do your fees work? Uh, it's a $5 delivery fee for the first three miles and then a dollar for each additional mile after that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, tips are always appreciated as well. So got it. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, four, four, this is my fourth year. Yeah. December, December will be the start of my fifth year. There you so, go. Yeah. Okay. So you're not a rookie at this. No. You've learned a lot. Yes. <laughs> All right. But you do have a plan to kind of downshift, so to speak. You have a new direction you're taking us. Why don't you share us uh, share with us what your new vision is? Uh, yeah. Um, so my new vision for Red Bike Delivery is a um, on the nonprofit side of the business world. Um, I noticed that there was a problem with... Uh, getting food to certain community members, uh, even with like, the free stands that we have all over the city, uh, when they would get big orders, uh, like dropped off big donations, people would always uh, be on like the Facebook page or whatever, wherever they announced it saying like, can somebody bring me something or bring me there or, or save something for me. So I was noticing that like people getting like, it's, it's great to have all that food, but if people can't get to it, then it's not really helping them. So the mission of this will be to help alleviate the food deserts and get produce and, and food to uh, the underserved community members, uh, especially those with mobility issues. 
Fantastic. Well, I want to talk about friends that are also involved in creating great communities, and that's my folks at Forsberg Real Estate. When it comes to creating the best living and working environments for the community, no one does it better than my friends at the Forsberg Real Estate Company. Brent Forsberg and his team create vibrant, holistic communities that inspire growth and encourage belonging. Focused on building stronger connections for people, a Forsberg project is always in tune with balancing relationships to create the optimum human experience. Since the 1950s, Forsberg has been enhancing the quality of life and the community they serve by re, uh, following the principles of regenerative growth and aligning the resources and tools available. Reach out to my friends at the Forsberg Real Estate Company by calling 517-349-9330 or check out their website at lansingrealestate.com. Well, I think it's super noble for you to go try to serve the under serve communities, <laughs> right? Getting food, you know, eliminating the food deserts. It's definitely a conversation and a topic. So what's the process to engage that part of town, I guess, mm-hmm. or parts of town, uh, and what's the process to becoming a, a, a non for, not for profit, right? So yeah. you're establishing Red Bike Delivery as a non profit organization or entity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There will be. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I have found like you know numbers and and statistics on where you know people are at that need. Um, the most help. Um, and then I, uh, uh, created a, um, Google form, uh, to send out to people, uh, to, for just a questionnaire, kind of asking what they want, what they would need or, you know, need like where they're located, things like that, just to kind of figure out a little more of the demographic and where it's at. And, um, uh, and then, um, Becoming a 501c3 is uh, uh, quite a process. Sure so. is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I've never done it, but I've heard. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm I'm slowly navigating that, uh, uh, and then you know, but I got a lot of people that have experienced it or, or, you know, know things that I don't. So that's, uh, always helpful. Um, but, uh, but yeah, until then, um, I, I will be under the, like fiduciary of, of uh, or the Fledge Foundation will be a fiduciary for Red Bike Delivery. So that way I can apply for grants. Uh, and then uh, uh, if anyone makes donations, they would be tax deductible, just like a just like a nonprofit, except I don't have to become one. Got it. OK, so that's great to hear that the Fledge is involved in the Fledge Foundation. Jerry Norris is a good friend of the show and has mm-hmm. been on a number of times. What other people have you used as a resource to try to get this thing moving in the right direction? Uh, I've actually talked to um, uh, the Capital City Market um, oh, okay. uh, downtown there. Uh, they would actually be the entity that would be supplying most of the produce. Um, so uh, I've talked to them. I've talked to the Allen Neighborhood Center because okay. um, they do their veggie box uh, deliver or not deliveries, but uh, 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 pickups. Um, so I'm trying to basically kind of like model it after something like that, but it's just delivered instead of coming people coming to pick it up. Uh, and then, yeah, there's so many like other nonprofits and, and, and just, you know, people that I've, uh, picked their brain or, you know, right, <laughs> right. just, yeah, sat down and talked to about what I need to do to make it successful. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are food pantries around too. I don't know if there's any, you know, not to feed you other ideas, so to speak, right. but, but, um, okay. No, I did. I did. The, the greater Lansing food bank was another one too, that I, would, okay. I had reached out to, too. So Yeah. They're, they're up, and I, I think they, they kind of, you know, dispense to all the, the pantries. So, Got it. Is there any opportunity with farmer's markets? I'm wondering if there are any, uh, you know, or, or you think about uh, farmers themselves. You mentioned food banks, you mm-hmm. know, local grocery stores. Um, but I'll tell you, to try to get food into areas uh, that are vulnerable mm. seems like a really noble pursuit. So thank you for your work on that. Yeah, of course. Thank you. <clears throat> but yeah, the farmers, I would love to, to incorporate them all. Uh, I just got to figure out how. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Logistics. Yep. <sighs> and so th- now the Fledge, has that been a, a, a longstanding relationship or is that something that you just uncovered to help be the fiduciary for your uh, nonprofit endeavors? Uh, yeah, I've actually, I met Jerry probably six years ago. Okay. Um, so and we've, you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot. I've grown a lot there. I've, I've learned a lot and, uh, uh, really thankful for all the programs and, and things that they offer there. So it's been super helpful. Yeah. They seem to be pretty aligned with the types of things you're trying to accomplish. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, here at Michigan, uh, 
Here at Michigan Reimagined, we tell stories of passionate Michiganders who do great things across the state. Today's sponsor is takes uh, at the art of positive storytelling to a whole new level. The good people at Good Marketing work with organizations across the state that are having a positive impact on the lives of Michigan residents. They help educate communities on the importance of affordable housing, the impact of wildlife and natural resource management, the availability of workforce development and educational programs. And if it lifts up people and makes communities stronger, then they want to help spread the word. If your organization needs help communicating the good work that you do, stop by their website at goodmarketing.com. That's G-U-D marketing.com. And talk about, you know, imp- impacting people. I mean, you're doing such a great job of, of getting things moved around. You know, at, at first, obviously, it started out as delivering mostly meals. And now it's real, kind of whatever the folks need. And now deliberately getting places to folks that are in need. Mm. So, um, you know, kind of what's next? Uh, how can listeners kind of get involved? What kind of help do you need at this point moving forward? Um, I, uh, uh, anybody that has any knowledge writing grants would be helpful. Uh, that's, that's something not my strong suit. Um, but, uh, uh, just, yeah, like, uh, you know, I, it's, it's just me. So I have to wear many hats and some of them don't fit very well. (laughs) Okay. But it's important to know that I think most entrepreneurs and small business owners, have strengths in certain areas and struggle with other areas. So that's the, uh, nothing to be ashamed of, I guess, sure. is my point to tell you that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if anybody has help in any in any capacity, really, uh, I will take it. <laughs> right on. Yes. So do you have any sponsors or any uh, corporate uh, you know, affiliations or is, uh, is your bike branded in any way? Or have you <laughs> talked to the people who manufacture your bike to tell them what you're doing and see if they'll throw you a couple bucks maybe they have a foundation they 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 those are all ideas that that i'm working on uh i definitely like with with pursuing the nonprofit, like the sponsors and 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 stuff like that like looking at the uh businesses around here and seeing who would be you know in line with what i'm trying to do and who would fit well with that and who has the money to you know to do right. something like that so um and then uh uh yeah the the uh the bike uh i i have thought about reaching out to the company like that makes the bikes uh uh but i have not done that yet that's a good idea though i need thank you for the reminder <laughs> <laughs> no problem well i mean some of these big bike manufacturers you know sometimes they'll have their own foundation and mm-hmm. if they heard the story they might be able to give you a little bit of pr and maybe float you a little bit of cash but not speaking on their behalf but right right <laughs> as a as a, as a re- recovering corporate executive i tell you that that opportunity is out there somewhere maybe all right good so how can people get in touch with you again remind folks of uh where they can get in touch with jeremy hurt at red bike delivery so uh a good way to get in touch with me with me is is facebook messenger uh like i said if you just go on uh facebook and type in red bike delivery uh it'll come up um or google maps uh i'm working i do have a phone number i just have to get it set up it, it, it will be 517-999-4rbd okay so uh hopefully that'll be easy for people to remember right um and then like i said it's 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 ready to go i just got to get it ported into you know do all that stuff back end stuff um and then uh yeah that's that's that would be the best now um uh, if you want to email, uh, it's Jeremy at redbikedelivery.com. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, everything's, everything's red bike delivery. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this has been a great conversation. Four years, uh, in the wind out there, delivering things left and right. Now, uh, endeavoring on, uh, on being a nonprofit and uh, eliminating some of the food deserts. Yeah. Appreciate you coming in here and sharing your story. We've been speaking with the founder of Red Bike Delivery, Mr. Jer- Jeremy Hurt. Welcome back to the show. Take care of yourself. All right. Thank you. 